Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. All right, so we now have the FOMC meeting out of the way. Uh, as expected, they didn't uh, cut rates this time around, but uh, there's a lot of indication that they will, and their futures are still pricing in uh, a better than equal odds chance, or a favorable chance we'll get a rate cut next month. So let's just talk on the charts, and we'll get to the rate cut uh, in a second, or the potential rate cuts. Uh, this is the uh, one just do a really quick update because I did this video for members today I did an update on an, a little more extensive update on uh, the, the markets focusing really on these 60 minute charts so uh, if you recall from uh, really it's been about a week now uh, maybe even over a week uh, we had uh, at this point here we were putting in these bull flag patterns and I was still expecting you know a top right here I had a preferred scenario to go on down after that but then we got locked in we started the doldrums a little early by the doldrums I mean the the you know sideways trading that the markets almost always lock into before a, a market moving or a potentially important FOMC meeting they're not all important this one certainly was uh, so what happened is from there we started to reverse and then we let locked into a pattern and then we had of course the pop-up the other day out of that pattern this was a uh, what I call a one-two punch from the uh, team Trump Draghi. Uh, we had Mario Draghi come out and say that he's, he's you know, the, uh, the president of the ECB bank, uh, th considering another rate cut and or uh, extending to their already bloated bond buying program. That's their, their quantitative easing over there. So that, coupled with one of Trump's usual uh, uh, trade talks are going good now, tweets. Uh, obviously, I'm sure he was nervous and probably knew Powell wasn't going to cut like he wanted. Uh, so that, that popped the markets uh, the other day and then we kind of went in a trading range again and today was was actually kind of muted for an FOMC announcement we did get the usual sharp back and forth rips and dips right after the announcement but the SPY only closed up 0.23 in the uh, QQQ 0.38 so uh, not a lot now here's what happened shortly after the meeting I pointed out uh, where I was starting this video and to follow up is at that point in time I had an alternative scenario um, of a that the markets could push on up here uh, after this high to put in a marginal new high and give us negative divergence. Uh, it was all set up. The, the indicators looked like they could use one more lift up. Uh, we didn't have that clean separation, and now we do. So we have uh, you know nice clean looking bearish rising wedge patterns on the 60 minute charts. I'll get to spy here in a second. And uh, so at this point. We're pushing the upper limits of where really this bounce should go. Um, what I mean by that is it really starts to kind of chip away and ugly up the, uh, the the case that this is just a counter trend rally after a drop down here and that we're going to take another big leg down. I am still very much leaning that way. Nothing today changed that. Uh, but as I said on the, you know, on the first video to members today, very important. We have these now. We have some uptrend lines forming with a few reactions there, and they form these nice, beautiful wedge patterns. And we also have that big 186-ish, uh, we'll call it 185.95 support level. It was a resistance level before, and at that point, before all, the, before we got locked into the the doldrums before the Fed, I said that would be the point where I'd be concerned about scaling out, and I still am. I haven't scaled out, as I said, and I've said many times, and on the site and these videos, I don't do anything on an FOMC day. That is all noise, and whatever happens that day is often faded. The initial reaction is usually not the reaction that sticks. Sometimes it is. But as of now, here's what we're looking at. So uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. And if we continue much up above, and I think I said it before, 188.37, that's where things start to get ugly. And uh, so we're looking at one of two things. If we break these wedges or these trend lines, um, and I'm going to go over some of the FANG stocks here in a second and SPY, they all come in together. That's the nice thing right now. We have these very clean uptrend lines. We have negative divergence on every one of the market leading FANG stocks except Facebook. I'm talking on the 60 minute time frame. We'll get to those. And so they give us these wedge patterns. Now we could push up a little more and as long as you know we we still have the uh, you know keep the the, the recent uh, reaction lows on the MACD and the P, or the PPO down here or MACD if you're using that we'll still have divergence. So there's a potential for a little more upside. But here's what I was saying before. We, we go up much more than that. What happens is we'll burn through these divergences. These indicators will make new highs. We won't have the negative divergence. We get too close to the previous highs in the market. And what happens? They're like a magnet. Uh, sometimes you reverse just shy. But very often in the market, and that's been the, the, the series now, a, a repeating pattern for the last year or more, you get up there and you pop it and then you reverse. So I wanted to say this. 
we go up much more tomorrow and or Friday and it starts to chip away at this near term bearish scenario but it did and the longer term uh, I should say that the, the the near term the shorter term scenario excuse me longer term I spent a whole uh, a lot of time on a weekly uh, video covering weekly and monthly charts just recently nothing anytime soon and the market could run five six seven eight percent and it's not going to change much on the long-term charts it could change a few things but uh, and, and how we close this month is important too so here's here's where I'm going with that and it kind of ties in again to if you check out the analysis on those long-term charts some of the monthly candles uh, the, the resistance levels we have we really to keep the the case strong and alive for a uh, not just a correction or pullback but another leg down that undercuts these lows another major leg down we really need to reverse here soon to keep that scenario ideal again please understand my words it doesn't mean that if we go up here then everything we can't drop down no matter what you're gonna have these trend lines and we're gonna need to watch those so I'm gonna just show it to you one more time here there's the uptrend line this is not uh, so much a trend line more of a divergence line it's only connecting two points in my book it takes three points to equal trend line these are what I call divergence lines so they can be moved but as of now they're in place and a sell signal would come on a break below that trend line and the this the recent lows here give or take a little bit below 186 uh, not much and it's a pretty pretty important level otherwise we just continue to grind up and uh, again if I happen to start scaling out of stops uh, somebody asked me I'm not doing anything today if I uh, start scaling out I should say of shorts not stops if I start getting stopped out and scale out just as I scaled in here uh, then I will certainly look to add back if we get some some solid sell signals so that's what I'm watching and it's right there it's uh, not just QQQ I'm gonna go over the rest here in a second but a uh, impulsive breakdown there I don't see anything stopping the uh, the markets if we do break that level again impulsively look for a solid 60 minute close and we'll probably at least backfill the gap from the other day and if we do backfill the gap what it's going to do it'll give us a big red candle or a series of candles and help to confirm that breakdown and that would increase the odds we're going lower that's QQQ here's how it looks on SPY almost identical here's your uptrend line forget about all the other lines here let me color code them for you okay so you have your uptrend line off the lows right there uh, one one two at least three reactions on it so far there's your divergence line and there's that level I've had on this chart for for many weeks now 291.40 so again it was the uh, Trump Draghi one two punch uh, the other earlier this week on Monday that put us up there um, but so far we're just kind of there's we haven't built on that and we didn't build on it much today uh, again a marginal marginal uh, gain and again I always say don't don't read too much into what happens even if we broke down today um, you can't read too much into that because it's that's what I call post FOMC noise that noise will begin to abate tomorrow and into Friday and certainly by next week this market's going to pick a direction if it wants to keep going up we'll probably know it by uh, by then and if it's going to break down it will uh, most likely do it by then as well so that's what I'm watching those are the levels that again it's almost a, a dual support level uh, that comes in uh, you have the trend line and then uh, that 291.40 ish level just below and then a big old gap to backfill and then of course you know all the levels here so uh, that's what it looks like there and let's just go to QQQ and we'll, I'll rifle through these quickly since I already covered it in the other video today uh, and that's the market leading FANG stocks uh, start out with Microsoft you can see the patterns uh, all you have to do is just look above you'll see uh, pretty pretty fairly well defined they're short term trend lines but they're pretty well defined with divergence on on just about all of them so that's what Microsoft looks like if it breaks that uh, small wedge you've got support around 130 to 131 a little support zone right there very important so that would that would also be a measured target so it wouldn't be the end of the world for Microsoft if it broke that and then bounced up but if it breaks that 130 131 to 130 level uh, that opens the door for more downside there so that's Microsoft world's largest company still the only one in the one trillion dollar club at the moment Amazon uh, there's a nice clean similar very similar short-term uptrend line uh, negative divergence like I said across the board on just about all of these except Facebook uh, this is Apple Apple was recently uh, added here you know we were bullish and long Apple uh, back on the breakout of this bullish falling wedge had a little stop raid right there some people held on to it and uh, it went on to hit right here my third target it hit it several times 
and and I said this in the other video too, just like the broad or QQQ, that was my uppermost uh, target on on Apple, where I figured it would probably bounce to after you know this bullish falling wedge breakout here. You know, it was long and bullish the market after covering a lot of shorts there, and then started scaling in. But like QQQ, it popped just slightly above uh, the, my max bounce target, my max, max expectation of where it would go. And so far, it hasn't really run. It popped above it. And again, that was that that move was 100 percent induced by the uh, dual tweets or not tweets, but the new headlines from both Trump and, and Draghi right there. And so far, again, the markets just haven't built on that even today uh, with the Fed pretty much coming in saying, look, we're not going to cut today as was expected but we're most likely going to cut going forward in fact that's uh if you listen to the uh the fed announcement and looked at the dot plot it's pretty much baked in the cake now all right so there's apple and this is just a beautiful little uh, bullish uh, bear i'm sorry bearish rising wedge just like you had a uh, nice clean bullish falling wedge here nice downtrend to watch the divergences which confirm in that case the bullish nature of the wedge and then down here you know, i gotta move that line back down must have been showing a scenario what I was doing earlier in the video is just showing you that look we could push up because what I always say support is support until unless broken so just because we have a wedge and a trend line there doesn't mean we can't have another reaction and if so it's not going to change anything you're just going to work our way up within the wedge and again no sell signals a trade setup which is all this is is not the same as an active trade or an actionable trade or trade entry a sell signal on this would come on a break an impulsive break of the trend line then you have support just below at 196 that's where my final target was set uh, just below that 196 target level so uh, maybe a breakdown back test and that would be your next sell signal so this is what I'm looking for and expecting breakdown of these patterns break of those support levels and uh, if that starts to happen I think things will play out even uh, more rapidly uh, as we move down if we continue to move up there's certainly the potential to burn through these divergences and then we're probably going to run at new highs at least in, in some of the indexes quite a few are still below there so again we'll, we'll know next week I'm not I didn't add to shorts today I'm not going to add to uh, any tomorrow or next week or anytime soon unless we break these trend lines impulsively and then uh, additionally if we add to some of those levels because I still have plenty of room to uh, plenty of dry powder left there's no reason at all to go into a Fed meeting you know fully long or short it's just it's gambling uh, G O O G L alphabet class A this one actually broke down here's your little wedge pattern you know you had the downtrend line that was broken and that was bullish back here but we've been walking up and you can see as we zoom in nice little clean trend line we broke down but I had mentioned this earlier in the other video if you were to take a short and I use the example of that Apple trade we were just on if Apple broke down today or tomorrow and uh, the rest of the stocks uh, any of these stocks especially the indexes SPY and QQQ if they don't break down what what will happen is that will prove to be a false breakdown so you, had, you can see here Alphabet broke down but it didn't go anywhere after the breakdown it broke both the uh, uptrend line again it's a minor uptrend line but it's it's there it's enough reactions to make it significant and you had a, a, a pretty decent uh, former support now resistance level at 102 you can see the reactions there were a lot of reactions there it was a top of a gap we failed there on the back test of the gap right here it failed again popped above it recently with the Trump pump or the uh, you know Trump do uh, Draghi news then we broke below it but again why didn't it we play out or this play out for anything more because QQQ and SPY and Apple and Microsoft and Intel and Facebook the rest of them didn't break down they're all above trend and that's why I say I never trade a stock or any one index in a vacuum always watch the other market leaders watch the index and you'll know it when you get it if, if we get a, a pretty good sell signal you'll see QQQ and then SPY break down you'll see most of those market leading FANG stocks break and if not, then uh, the trend remains bullish until until they do break down. So this we could regain this trend line on Alphabet. Uh, as of now, we're below it. So let's see what happens tomorrow if there's more downside follow through, which again would coincide with a breakdown of the rest of those. Facebook, uh, like I said earlier, the best of the lot, in my opinion. 
it's the only one uh, the market leading thing stocks that does not have negative divergence on the 60 minute a lot of buzz about their new cryptocurrency they're working on all that but we do have a pretty clean trend line to watch and that's so that's what we'll need to do and it also broke that came back down below this minor support level about 187 still below it now but again uh the trend is up and right now we don't have any sell signals but uh if that changes that would uh you know you want to see a break of this trend line in facebook as well as the majority of the other companies that i've covered as well as of course most importantly spy and qqq uh, I'm going to cover two more. Those are the top five FAAMGs that I cover. And then this is the about the sixth largest component of the NASDAQ 100, Cisco. You, you know, we had a nice trend line here. It's not all drawn out. There was a divergent high. There was your sell signal back then. Cisco had a nice correction. And then it pushed up. You can see right here, here's our divergence lines right there. Negative divergence at this high. And you had a very steep trend line right here. We broke down, we back tested that trend line on, on uh, Cisco, and then Cisco started to correct, and it's still below there. And, uh, so we don't really have a trend line to watch on it, but it because this one's already broken down and it has been moving down lower, stair stepping. Uh, it's just in what we call what I'd call a near term downtrend. Uh, downtrend simply defined as a security making a series of lower lows and lower highs, which so far it's done. Uh, but again, we'll see where this goes will most likely depend on where the rest of those stocks go. And then finally, Intel. This is another one we had recently as an official active trade on the site. And we hit our, I had a, 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 originally I had a final target up here right under that $50 resistance level, big old gap. And I closed the trade, la I think it was, was it last week or the week before? Uh, timely exit, we got out. I, um, there was enough in the charts to have me close it when we hit uh, this level right here. And we did have a nice correction after. Now what happened again? That the uh, Draghi Trump uh, news uh, popped it above that level. Um, by a marginal amount, but now we're back to where we closed the trade out uh, a week or two ago. And uh, more importantly, take away all that stuff here. You can see we have a nice clean little wedge pattern. There it is. So that's that's it. We'll end it here. The common theme are bearish rising wedges across the board. Uh, respect them if they break down, just like uh, that's you know pretty simple stuff. Look for these 60-minute divergent lows. That's why I was bullish and long Intel back here. We had a bullish falling wedge. It also fell to support on the daily chart, and now we've come full circle. Bearish rising wedge, trend line to watch. No sell signals yet, but uh, if we get them soon, the more of these stocks that I just covered break down, and of course you want to see QQ and SPY, the better the chances are that we're going to, uh, we'll start a trend reversal, at least a, a tradable correction and possibly more. We'll just have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how, you know, how the charts develop if that does happen in the coming days. All right, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.